I get asked quite a lot of questions about um, more complex seventh chords like major sevenths and minor sevenths uh, and even, even uh, diminished sevenths and about where they come from and, and how they're developed and how they can be used and integrated into um, songwriting and improvisation uh, and stuff like that. Um, it's stuff that I've covered in various videos before but I, I thought it was worth just drawing the strings together into one, one video just to talk about that um, because it's actually quite interesting. Um, if we think about how we develop what we call the basic natural chords of a key say we're in the key of C major and that's the scale of C major those natural chords are generated by building a simple triad shape on each of the notes of the scale. Okay, so the scale of C major is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C and the chords go C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, C. And what we're doing there each time is building that simple triad. Yeah? Same works in say the key of E flat major that's the scale and the chords go E, F minor, G minor, A flat, sorry did I just say E? I meant E flat, F minor, G minor, A flat, B flat, C minor, D diminished and back to E flat. Okay, so I'm just building a triad on each note of the, um, each note of the scale. Back to C. The key to understanding how the different sevenths are generated is really understanding how triads are formed. Okay, a, a triad is a very simple chord that's built up of two thirds. A third is a kind of interval. I, I've talked about intervals in one of my previous videos. I'll, I'll include a link. But very basically, to to make a third from any note in the scale, to go up a third, you hit the note you're after, and then go one, two, three. Okay, so you count up three notes, but including the one you're starting on. So it's not one, two, three. That's a fourth. It's one, two, three. Okay, so E is a third above C. Okay, if we start on E and go up three notes of the C major scale, one, two, three, that's also a third. But that's a different type of third. That's a major third. It includes one, two, three, four, five semitones. Okay, or half steps. Whereas that is a minor third. One, two, three, four semitones. Yeah, we can do the same with other notes in the scale. So we started on D. One, two, three. That's a minor third. G, one, two, three, major third, one, two, three, four, five semitones in it, okay? But the associated minor third would be that, okay? So major third, minor third, major third, minor third. Those, that particular minor third and that minor third doesn't occur naturally in C major because we haven't got those two notes, okay? So, all we do to make a triad is stack two thirds on top of each other, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, and there we have a major chord. And a major chord is a major third with a minor third stacked on top of it. Okay, dead easy to make one. In the key of C major, you find any white note. Go up a third, go up another third, and you have a chord, and that's the chord of G. Yeah? Or start on E, one, two, three. One, two, three, and we've got uh, E minor, chord of E minor there. Notice we've got a minor third with a major third on top of it, whereas G major was a major third with a minor third on top of it. Okay, so that's how we go along. And we create those natural chords of C major. Yeah, a song in C major doesn't have to confine itself to the natural chords, you know, you can get all sorts of kind of weird and crazy um, chords in, in, in a song in any key, but those, the natural chords of the key are the ones that are going to appear most often. So how do we come up with stuff like C major 7 and F major 7 and D minor and all that stuff? Well, let's look at them. C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, B diminished 7 and back up to C major 7. You can probably see what's going on. We're taking the basic triads, but instead of having two thirds stacked on top of each other, we've got two thirds plus another third. Okay, so from the C major triad we got 1, 2, 3, and we get C major 7. 
from D minor, we got 1, 2, 3, and we get D minor 7. E minor, E minor 7, F, F major 7, G is G7, okay, um, it's a dominant 7th, it has a, a special role in the key of C major in that it resolves onto C, okay, that's the only natural dominant 7th chord in the key of C major. A minor, A minor 7, B diminished, B diminished 7th, a little bit more complicated because an A flat doesn't appear in the key of C major naturally. B diminished 7th uh, chords are a bit special. All diminished chords are made up of entirely of minor thirds. So a major chord is a major third with minor thirds, and a minor chord is a minor third with major third. A diminished chord, sorry if this sounds like crazy rocket science, it's really not that difficult, honest. Um, a diminished chord is minor third with a minor third on top of it, and a diminished seventh is another minor third on top of that. Okay, look at those minor thirds. One, two, three, four semitones, one, two, three, four semitones, one, two, three, four semitones, and then back up there. Yeah? Why is this stuff useful? Um, it's useful if you are improvising and you've been given a very, very basic chord sequence because you now know the natural notes that go on top of it to make those richer, cooler chords. Yeah, It's useful if you're a songwriter and rather than coming up with chord sequences like, you know, C, A minor, F, G, you can now do cooler stuff like C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, G7, yeah, just a richer, denser sound. As with all harmony, what it comes back to is scales. So it's really useful to know your scales, okay? If you're unsure of a scale, uh, there are loads of tools online. Um, the Piano World Chord Tool, I, I used to include links to it, but just Google it. Piano World Chord Tool has also got a, a guide to scales. So if you can't work out a particular scale in a particular key, go there, okay? The stuff we're talking about works for all major scales, yeah? Minor scales are a little bit different and a little bit more complicated. I'm, 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 actually, I think I'm going to do a couple of videos fairly soon on, on minor scales and their complexities and how we develop their chords, okay? But all of this is pretty well safe for major scales, yeah? So it, the key thing to remember is know, know your scale and it's all about thirds. Let's do it one more time. Let's say we're back in... E flat major. Those are our natural chords. E flat, F minor, G minor, A flat, B flat, C minor, D diminished, E flat. Okay? And I'm building them with thirds from the, the scale of C um, the scale of um, E flat major. Okay? If I had another third. E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, A flat major 7, B flat 7, C minor 7, D diminished 7, look at all those minor thirds stacked on top of each other, minor third, minor third, minor third, yeah, and back up to E flat major 7, okay? There we go. Fairly straightforward when you play around with it. If it seems kind of crazy for now, pick out one or two scales and start building those chords for yourself. Okay. Um, as with so much music theory, it sounds absolutely mad when you explain it, and it's you know it's a mystery to me how 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 I understand it. Um, but when you start playing around on the piano and experimenting for yourself and building those chords for yourself, suddenly it all makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense to your ears, if, if not to your not to your brain when it's being explained to you. If you need uh, a bit more help with really basic harmony and stuff like that, check out the the earlier videos in my timeline. There's a ton of stuff there. You might also be interested in my book, How to Really Play the Piano: The Stuff Your Teacher Never Taught You, uh, which has got loads of stuff about chords in at the front and about uh, basic harmony and things and um, improvisation, playing from lead sheets, various bits and pieces in there. The print edition is fourteen pounds ninety five. Um, and I can ship to most places in Europe and the States. Um, the digital edition is £9.95. You can download it straight away wherever you are in the world. Uh, so there we go. 
If you've got any questions, come back to me. Um, I always do answer questions. Sometimes it takes a little while. Uh, I do get a lot. A lot of people get in touch with me, which is great. Um, but it takes a while to get through them. And I'm, I'm, as you can tell from the relative infrequency of my videos at the moment, if you're a regular viewer, I'm really busy uh, with work. Um, things are going to calm down soon, so I'm hoping to get back into making more videos and you know, get a good run of um, 15 or 20 done between now and Christmas. Uh, but there we go. I uh, hope that's useful. Any questions, do get in touch, but it might just take a little while to get back to you. Okay? There you are.